over the past few weeks, we've been doing a very special series involving where to publish your ebooks, your print books, and your audiobooks. And of course, we're going to finish it all out this week. We took a brief departure this past week to celebrate the 200th episode. So of course, you're listening to episode 201 of the Self-Publishing with Dale podcast, which tickles me to death to even say that. Hey, you know, this uh, podcast wouldn't be, uh, absolutely wouldn't be possible if it weren't for listeners like you and viewers like you over on YouTube and also the fine sponsors. Over the past couple of months, our sponsor Miblart has contributed two stellar cover designs and are now looking to give away a premium cover design package worth $700. Yeah, 700 big ones here, folks. You can enter for your chance to win at dailinks.com slash giveaway. The deadline is September 1st of 2023, although I'll let you know the last winner of our, our giveaway, Clay, did not reach out to me. I've tried to contact them numerous times over the last couple of weeks, so chances are very likely I'm going to end up pulling a new winner for that one because we got to have a winner. So until we get that one off the ground, there might be a little bit of a delay of the final giveaway just to kind of give you a heads up. So enter now, enter daily, and share it with another author who might appreciate it too. Also for premium graphic design for authors, use my preferred company in Miblart. Get 10% off when you use Dale10, that's one zero, when you visit my affiliate link at dalelinks.com slash Miblart. All right, so we're gonna get into where to publish your audiobooks. Now just to be clear, what I won't discuss today is how you can publish the audiobooks, all right? it's We can save that for another day. Rest assured, every site has a walkthrough or support to assist you in the process. So any of the ones that I mention, it's going to, you know, have something of that right there. I, I appreciate everybody always asking me questions, but sometimes you just got to go to the source to get the actual good answer. And uh, before we do dive into all of this, I think it's important to kind of discern between DIY, meaning do it yourself, and finished price per hour or royalty share. Let's start out with per finished hour or PFH as we call it within the industry. And that's what you end up paying the narrator per hour of the finished product, all right? As you can imagine, producing an audiobook, recording that isn't just as simple as hitting the record and bing, bang, boom, you're done. All right, because actually a lot of narrators out there, very experienced ones, typically an hour of listenable content typically could take anywhere from three hours or more to go and produce all of that because they'll have to sit down, they got to study your manuscript, they've got to figure out all the spellings and, and they have to sometimes proof it to make sure it sounds right when they're reading it. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that and not to mention all the editing and the mastering and making sure all of that stuff is set. So per finished hour typically can be a little bit pricey at first. You're gonna have a little bit of a sticker shock because a good a good narrator is typically going to charge anywhere from about $250 per finished hour or greater. If you find anybody else lower than that and they've got some great quality, get them, keep them, don't let them go anywhere. Now, um, when it comes to DIY, obviously, that's just going to be you doing it by yourself. And then there's, of course, royalty share. And I'm going to explain why I don't like royalty share because what it is, it's giving up a percentage of your profits to the voiceover talent or the narrator in exchange for their work ahead of time. Now, I'll go ahead and explain some of that here as we go to each one of these platforms of where to publish. Now, I'm just gonna name a good handful of these platforms. I know there are a ton of other audiobook publishing platforms that are out there, but I'm gonna talk about the larger platforms, ones that have been discussed in the past, and I think, you know, bear worth in, in repeating and sharing some of this information if you haven't heard them before. So let's start it out with the audiobook publishing platform that everybody's probably pretty familiar with, and it is ACX. That's the Amazon own company, also known as Audiobook Creation Exchange. Now, they distribute to three avenues. Now, those two of those avenues are pretty big, and it's the direct route to getting to those platforms, and that's Amazon and Audible. Obviously, with it being an Amazon-owned company, you're going to be getting that reach. Now, they also hit Apple as well. Now, that's not the only way to get Apple. In fact, uh, the other ones I'll mention, you can hit Apple as well. And here's the really cool thing is ACX is what Apple does not refer to as a preferred partner. I've actually tuned into some of Apple's lives before that they've hosted with Ally, and that's one of the things they've said. Findaway Voices, preferred partner. They, they like to work with, with Findaway Voices. 
ACX, it was a hard no. So um, now as far as royalty goes, now you're going to be getting 40% for exclusive um, sales. So if you decide to keep your audiobook, live and die over on ACX, you'll get a 40% royalty. Yeah, it's it's pretty low. And the funny thing is actually back in the early days of ACX, the royalty structure was so much better, but for whatever reason, they decided to walk that back. Maybe it's because of hosting, maybe it's because of delivery, file, or, or, uh, delivery fees for your files. I don't know. I've never had a, a, a response to something like this or an explanation of why this is so absurdly low, but it really measures up with a lot of the other companies, especially if you're going direct. Now, if you decide to go non-exclusive, meaning you're wanting, wanting to go beyond just Amazon, Audible, and Apple, you can do non-exclusive with ACX, but they will penalize you with a 25% royalty. Now, I think it's hogwash in my opinion. I think it absolutely sucks because it already starts pretty low and then they decide they're gonna go ahead and pull 15% off the top just because you aren't going to be beholden to their platform. Now, I, I'm just not a fan of exclusivity, of just staying on any one platform because should they decide they want to take their ball and go home with it, well, guess what? too bad, so sad, you're stuck with it, all right? They can pull the rug out from underneath you and you are screwed. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. So just kind of think about that. If you are the type of person that says, you know what, Audible and Amazon, they pull in the lion's share of publication profits for audiobooks, I'm just gonna go there. You're finding that it's not paying you as well as it should, you may want to consider to go non-exclusive so you can hit other avenues. Now, um, they do have their own marketplace that you can actually talk with other audiobook narrators uh, and voiceover talent. You can use their filter. It's a wonderful uh, marketplace. I've had many great conversations and developed some great relationships over through their marketplace. Now, uh, you have it available through a 50-50 royalty split or royalty share, meaning that you will give up 50% of your net profits with the narrator in exchange for them to do the work 100% free for you. And that is a seven year agreement. As soon as you get yourself signed on and it's fired off, you are stuck with it unless you otherwise talk that audiobook narrator out of releasing the rights to you. And at any point after that seven years, or if you decide you want to take your ball and go home with it, well, you can do that, all right? There are some hoops you can kind of jump through, but here is the deal though. As soon as, let's say, you buy the rights to your audiobook files with that 50-50 royalty share narrator, all right, you have to delist it from ACX, essentially losing any reviews and you're losing any type of relevance on any of the platforms by doing this. And let's just be clear, as soon as those seven years are up, if you don't buy the rights, that doesn't mean you own the rights to those audio files. It was something I believed back in 2015. Oh, wow, this is a killer deal. If I just wait seven years, I'll be able to get those audio files and I'll collect 100% of the earnings. It don't work that way. And a lot of narrators are gonna want to be paid according to their per finished hour, which comes to the very next solution, per finished hour. I highly recommend if you have the discretionary budget, or if you don't have it, wait, get yourself the discretionary budget to get per finished hour rates. It's just much easier. You own the rights. You don't need to take things down. You don't need permission to put it in any other platform. Highly recommend per finished hour if you can. And there's also plans that they do for a combination of both where they do the royalty share and you pay a certain amount up front. I think they call it like royalty share plus or something like that. It essentially is a way that you're giving them a little bit of payment up front to kind of cover some of their expenses. You know, they may they may outsource some of their editing to other people, so that's costing them money. Uh, there might be other expenses that come up during production. So that's why they would end up doing something like that. And there are a lot of audiobook narrators that are willing to do the royalty share plus versus just the regular royalty share where it's just 50-50 because it's a lot of risk for that narrator to do that. Now, of course, if you've got your own files, you can come in with your own files and that's fine. Um, my biggest gripes with ACX really is the blatant returns abuse. Now, they've gotten better, according to them. 
uh, about their customers returning some of these audiobooks, but they were caught with their hand in the cookie jar back, I think it was October of 2020. Now, you can feel free to fact check that. I might be a little bit off here on this one. You can find out more details about it at audiblegate.com. Some of the issues that are ongoing, and especially they're actually, there's some litigation going on with Audible in regards to the blatant returns abuse and such. And here's the deal is, um, guess what? The ACX will do sometimes, or Audible more importantly does to their, their readers. They will purchase something and the, the uh, confirmation email will come back with a, hey, just so you know, you can actually return it and here's a great book you should check out if you do. Why are you doing that? That, that is absolutely just scumbag practice right there. I'm sure they're aware they can return it. Everybody in the history of everything and all of just, you know, any walk of business knows that there's always an option to get a return of some sort. To encourage something like that and put a book as a potential like bribe to bring people back to returning their stuff, that sucks, all right? D don't do that. Now, here's the biggest problem. They own the biggest chunk of the pie in online audiobook sales, and they know it. That's why it seems like they're okay with abusing some of these indie authors. In fact, Brandon Sanderson, if you don't know the name, Google him up. You know, great author, science fiction author, good stuff. Uh, fantasy, science fiction fantasy, does fantasies. Well, you, you get the idea. Brandon Sanderson literally said, I am not publishing my books to Audible because of some of the shady practices that they've done. And it, it is stellar to see a person in this position walking away from potentially millions of dollars to be had through the Audible platform because, well, they're screwing over other authors. That's how he feels about it. But I'm gonna save a full-on rant for ACX for another video for another day. I just feel like ACX is still an option but for you to really be holding yourself to the platform by going exclusive, you might want to think otherwise. I'll share a little bit more at the very end of this podcast. Now, the next big platform to consider is going to be Findaway Voices. I'm a big fan of Findaway Voices since day one. Really love their platform. They distribute to over 40 different online retailers and libraries. And I think their last count was 42 or 43. It's insane. They reach the other uh, the, the avenues that ACX does, including Amazon and Audible and Apple. And guess what? As I said before, Findaway Voices is a preferred partner of Apple, meaning that they actually get a higher percentage of each one of those sales. Now, to be clear, Findaway Voices is a distributor. They will distribute it on your behalf. In return, they're going to take 20% of all net sales, meaning you get 80-20 split. Now, because there's different 40, 40 different platforms, each one of those platforms have different royalties and payouts. So for instance, some libraries have a one copy per use or per sale um, you know, model. Some of them come from a checkout model. Uh, a lot of them have varying degrees of royalties. So for instance, um, one of the platforms, of course, since Findaway Voices was acquired by Spotify, they actually get a 50% royalty. Side note, by the way, I had actually announced this earlier this year, how Spotify officially waived that 80-20 split with Findaway Voices. You get a 50% royalty, period. So it's better than what you get on ACX. That is a really, really nice thing. And Spotify is pumping in millions upon millions of dollars into their audiobook program because, well, they really want to see about knocking Audible off of their little ledge there. So at any rate, um, you've got that 80-20 split. Just remember that each one of those avenues, go into your agreement with Findaway Voices. You sign that up when, as soon as you go distribute something through their platform. And if you scroll down far enough, you'll see a breakdown of each one of those percentages. Now, um, Findaway Voices does have their own marketplace. It's actually relatively new and uh, I have yet to actually play around with it. They do have a royalty split option like ACX, but a little bit better. They don't just do the hard 50-50 split and well, then they'll do it for you. The, the narrator will work for you. They actually do the 80-20 royalty split where you get 20% 
of the sales over to them with 50% off the normal per finished hour rate. Meaning that you have to pay 50% up front for the per finished hour for that project in order to get that 80-20 royalty split. It is a 10 year agreement. However, you can go back and opt out of that by paying 100% of the per finished hour. Now that really, it's, it's a nice thing that they have available, yes, you would end up paying 150% more than what you would if you were to just do it up front per finished hour. And that's it. And by the way, they do have that available as well per finished hour. Um, but uh, you're, you're going to have to pay a significant amount if you want to retain those rights. Now, do the audiobooks need to be taken down? No, I have not been able to find that out through Find Away Voices. I probably should have reached out to support before I went live today, but it is what it is. Feel free to reach out to them. But I do know that over in ACX, as soon as you want to take your rights from the narrator through a royalty split, um, they ask that you take it down and then you can republish it as soon as you have the rights and permission to do so. Uh, they also have a combination of the per finished hour. I think I've already mentioned that. And of course the DIY. Um, DIY is always my preferred method. If I find a good narrator, I usually like to stick to them and I'll typically pay for them off platform. Um, I just believe when it comes to royalty share, this is my personal belief and this is my opinion. All right. This is not the gospel here, folks. Uh, I think royalty share is not a good option. This is through experience that I've learned that it, it's, it's a very frustrating experience. You might get yourself a great narrator, but in the same instance, as soon as you want to get the rights to that book, their per finished hour sometimes will all of a sudden jack right up, especially if you've been having significant sales. So I would highly recommend, and I know I've said it before, if you can save the money up, get yourself a good narrator so that way you own 100% of the rights and there's no back and forth when it comes to that. Next platform to consider is Authors Republic. Now they distribute to 60 partners globally with Findaway making up a large chunk of that distribution or they having, they're having some type of overlap with what Findaway already has. So it sounds like there's a lot but it really isn't as much as you would think. Now they've got a 70-30 split in it, much in the same way as what we have with Findaway Voices, that they are going to be taking 30% of the profits that are coming in there because each one of the retailers and libraries that are you know, buying that are gonna take their percentage before it gets sent on over towards your direction. Now this is concerning because if Authors Republic is using Findaway to distribute their audiobooks, this means that find a way is going to take a cut before even that cut comes over to you. And then authors Republic's going to take an additional cut. Now, the one thing that is distinct between authors Republic and the previous two that I've mentioned is there's no marketplace. There's no like narrators you can approach. It's DIY only. Now, my biggest gripe when it comes to Authors Republic and one of the reasons why I do not use them, it's all or nothing. There's no deselecting specific avenues like you can say, for instance, with Findaway Voices. It's very similar to ACX in that ACX, it's all or nothing. Either you distribute through them or you don't. And I actually even reached out to Authors Republic, gosh, a few years ago and said, hey, is this policy ever going to change? And they didn't really give anything positive. It was essentially like, yeah, it is what it is. Either you go with us or you don't go with us. So Authors Republic is something definitely to consider. They've got a good track record. I haven't really heard anything terrible about them by any stretch. Now, here's another audiobook distribution platform that's a little bit different. It's called Publish Drive. Now, I've talked about Publish Drive over the past couple of podcasts, and I think it bears worth in repeating. Publish Drive is another distribution platform that actually specializes in ebooks, print books, as well as audiobooks. This is one of the very few platforms, along with, say, like Streetlib, um, that distributes all three of those versions. So that's kind of nice. Publish Drive does distribute to 13 online retailers and libraries. Now, here's the cool thing you get 100% of the net profits. Yes. They're distributing it on your behalf, much like Find Away Voices and Authors Republic does, but they're not taking a percentage of the profits. Why is that? Well, it's a subscription-based platform, meaning that 
any books that you're distributing, you actually have to pay a monthly fee to them. Now, unfortunately, I don't know the numbers right off the top of my head. You can always go ahead and Google this one up. I think it's like $14.99 for two publications, something like that. Um, if you know that you're going to be able to offset that through sales, then it might make sense. So say for instance, you're doing $1,000 in audiobook sales, then chances are very likely going through Publish Drive is definitely a good option. They don't have a marketplace though. So it's DIY only. You can find any number of narrators that you want to. You can always try to poach them off over off of ACX or even find some of them through places like Fiverr or any other freelance platforms. Here's the really cool thing about Publish Drive is they actually reach super wide into some of the most random areas. In fact, they reach China for all of their stuff. They reach China. No other platform that I know of reaches China. So Publish Drive is something to consider. And it's going to be an avenue that I'm definitely going to explore for my future publications going into 2024. So make sure you stay tuned for that. A few honorable mentions. Of course, I just briefly touched on Street Lib. Street Lib I've talked about over the past couple of uh, podcasts. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to explore their audiobook options just yet. Um, but they definitely look like a platform to keep an eye on and keep a pulse on. So make sure you stay tuned to this podcast for more details about them. There's another one called Lantern Audio, which they were formerly known as Listen Up Audio. And they actually are kind of, of a DFY distribution platform where they will match you up with narrators and audiobook um, producers. So that way you can get what you need to. Um, it, I'm not 100% sure on this one here if you can come with your own content. Uh, I've reached out to the platform a few times in the past and have had radio silence. So it's why I really haven't invested too much time into Lantern Audio. Hopefully they get a little bit better about returning people's support tickets and answering questions. But for whatever reason, they do have a stamp of approval from the fine folks over at the Alliance of Independent Authors watchdog list. So there is something like that. There's also another platform called Shinshi, which is spelled X-I-N-X-I-I. Um, that's another one to look into. YouTube is another platform to distribute your audiobooks. If you can just put it into a video form, you can be able to do it. In fact, I actually good friend and former guest of the channel here, Nick Thacker, had actually one of his th thriller novels turned into an audiobook with some AI narration. The cool thing is, is I think it was done by Eleven Labs. It essentially modulated his voice and made it sound like him. And it actually was pretty good. And he got himself fully monetized with that one book because enough people came in and consumed it and it knocked him over into the YouTube partner program. So he's able to get paid for all his videos with ads served on that. And he also has other options like the merch shelf and things like that. Apple and Google play are a couple of avenues that are direct, but they're not direct. So meaning that you can't take your DIY audiobook over to Apple or Google Play. You got to go through other avenues like Findaway Voices to get to them, unless you take advantage of their AI voice narration. So Apple and Google Play both have their own distinct AI voice narration software that's built into the platform. So you can be able to distribute that way. This is probably an interesting update. Um, I would say for those of you that are a bit more cash strapped and don't really see an option of publishing audiobooks, this might be a good option for you to consider to maybe even bootstrap your way to getting an actual human audiobook narrator. So uh, think about that. Um, if you're 100% against, you know, supporting yourself with AI narration, I totally understand, but it is something to consider because it is an additional avenue of revenue that you can be able to get. Hey, this is the last call for the Miblark giveaway. Enter for your chance to win a stellar premium design package when you visit dailinks.com slash giveaway. Enter now, enter daily, and share with another author friend who might need it too. Special thanks to our sponsors, Miblark, for their generous contributions. All right, here are my final thoughts. I just want to, first of all, just implore you to reconsider going exclusive with ACX. If, if, all right, because I see a lot of people that just go ACX. I'm just going to ACX. Everybody tells me I should go there. If you're not seeing any real return from going exclusive to audiobook creation exchange, get out. 
right? Doesn't mean you have to pull it off of ACX. You just have to send a ticket over to support at acx.com and say, hey, I want to move my book to non-exclusive. And they'll move it from 40% down to the 25%. If you're 50-50 royalty split, by the way, or doing any royalty shares, that's a no-go. Can't do that. All right. So if you're not seeing any real return, pull out. You could do that within 90 days of publishing your audiobook through their platform. And if you're not willing to support a company that actively promotes returns to its listener base after they buy your audiobook, might be a reason to leave. And if you want to reach a wider audience, yes, I understand that Amazon is the 500 pound pink gorilla in the room, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to sit here and worship this gorilla and say, well, that's the only place I'll be able to make money. There are a lot of audiobook listeners everywhere else. And would you want to pass up that opportunity to reach readers who may not even be familiar with Audible or Amazon or even want to touch those two platforms? So just think about your readers or your listeners when it comes to something like that. Now, can you publish through all the platforms? I hear a lot of people asking that. Yes, but you want to avoid overlap. For instance, Authors Republic uses Findaway for distribution and they have that all or nothing philosophy. So meaning that if you want to distribute through Authors Republic, you're just going to have to stick with Authors, Authors Republic. Eh, not a fan of that. Now, Findaway Voices is a good place to start, then build out from there. Places like Publish Drive, you can select any of one of the avenues that you want to through them. You can even use it through ACX and just deselect Amazon and Audible over on Findaway Voices. So many mix and match options. And join me next week when I discuss author productivity tools, tips and hacks. And over the next few weeks, I'll be discussing ways to optimize your business. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale and I'll catch you next week.